Okay, we are still talking about power audits. And don't forget what brought us here is that we are talking about 49 reasons why your solar system installation fell. And power audits is one of the reasons. So we are trying to take you step by step on how we carry out our power audit so that when you are thinking of installing solar, the very first thing what guarantees success most times is how you go about your power audit. So there is always a chronological order we follow when we are going for power audit. The very first thing is you have to check the electrical architecture of the building to ensure the type of electrical installation that was done. Uh, since you are going to integrate solar in an already existed electrical architecture, so you really need to understand the type and how the connections were done. Uh, there are most times you need to do load separation in which you power some of the electrical load with the solar system installation and you power some of the electrical load with the conventional uh, power. So you need to check the electrical architecture. Uh, we are saying that you have to check the following defective DBs and change over switch. We don't accept this when we come for your facility for installation. When we come and see something like this, we we must is a must uh, for us to work on this uh, this place. This is what we normally approve of at the end of the day. Uh, this thing that is like this. When we finish working on it, you have something close to this uh, or something like this. So you have to check the. Uh, defective DBs and change over switches and arrive at something like this there should always be a fire extinguisher close to any electrical uh, system we have to take stock of electrical loads to be powered with proposed solar energy what and what will be powered with electrical load we will talk about electrical load at length but for now we are just listing uh, the electrical loads you might have Numerous electrical loads, but sometimes if the client can't afford to power all the electrical loads with the solar system, you can separate some of the electrical loads, you know, the duration of usage and the wattage and every other thing that we will discuss in the course of this training. So we say take stock of the electrical loads to be powered with proposed solar energy. And you have to check the ratings. We talk about electrical load ratings as we progress. That is the power consumption of each of the electrical loads. Then you have to consider the operating arts of each of the electrical loads. Each of these points we have mentioned here, they affect, they affect the size of system and the approach you use in designing the solar system another thing you have to take note of is the powerhouse um, there is always an environment or the uh, the condition that is the temperature that you have to subject the electrical components to most times we put ac when we finish installing systems of this magnitude, they will generate lots of heat. So most times we put AC. So, but if it is in a residential apartment, let your ventilation be okay. So you have to agree on the equipment room because the distance from the equipment room to the changeover to the, uh, the, the may, maybe the uh, roof that is the solar panel will adversely affect the cost of the solar system installation cable run will always affect will always result in voltage drop so you have to be sure of where the powerhouse is located determine the cable length that will be needed for the solar system installation the cable length will affect these days that cables are very costly cable length will always affect 
the cost of the solar system is much. We will talk about cable at length when we get to that topic. So check the roof status. Check for missing, damaged, defective, or under specified roofing sheets. We'll talk about roof at length. Then, if you are interested in joining our page training, this is the account detail that you have to make your payments. If you are outside of Nigeria, you can DM me with uh, the number you see, or you can send a DM. We'll give you the account detail to pay into. But if you are in Nigeria, you pay to 01082569115 Subway Energy Limited. It's a Union, Union Bank account. Uh, we'll talk about roof status. If you go for power audit and you meet this kind of roof, please run for your dear life because if you don't make the roof like this, you have issues. So you have to advise the client. You have to advise the client. It's a must to work on this roof to have something like this. This is what I mean by roof status. If when you finish, if not, when you finish uh, doing the installation, uh, this uh, there will be serious leakage after you finish mounting your solar panel and the, the clients will not smile with you. So please always check the roof status and always check the roof gauge. You can see when I introduce you to the roof, uh, the caliper before now. I introduce you to the caliper before now. So this is most times what we do. You can see this roof gauge now is 0 0.50, whereas this one is 0 0.7. This is the approved or the recommended roof gauge that we normally use for solar system installation. Uh, not that we can use this, but this is the recommended roof gauge. Um, if you can see this roof, you can mount on it at least, you will still remain. But if you use a roof that is very light, if you mount on it, something else will happen. So please always ensure that the roof gauge is of standard. Don't forget, this is Subway Energy Academy, the training section of Subway Energy Limited. If you are interested in our training, our paid training, that is our master class, feel free. We'll take you by the hand, we'll show you the secret, the nitty gritty surrounding the solar industry. When we are talking about the secret, there's no, every industry is built on a secret and we are ready to show you. We don't want people to be complaining of fail solar system installation. We want to be a blessing to you when you join our paid training. So, we are going to continue from 